Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petite. In previous video you have learned how to stitch double fold or single fold bias binding to a straight edge and in this tutorial I will show you how to join two ends together in case if you have to stitch your bias binding around the entire panel. So if this is something you would like to learn then keep on watching. There are a number of ways you can join those two ends together. I will show you a few of my favorites. So imagine this is your panel and you have stitched the bias binding around the entire piece. When you do, make sure you leave a nice opening between the beginning and the end of your stitch. I like to leave about 7 to 10 centimeters gap here. Then take a marking tool and mark a midpoint between the first and the last stitch. So you can lay those two pieces flat on top of each other. And then you can either measure the distance or just eyeball it. So I'm just going to roughly mark it in the middle. And I'm going to do that on both ends of my bias binding. So what you're going to do next is to take those two pieces and bring them right sides together. You're going to align those notches where you just marked. So I have one notch here and the other one here. I'm going to line them up so they are exactly in the same place. And then you can pin your bias binding together. You can unfold the other side if you haven't done so already. Here we go. And now you're going to take this to the machine and you're going to stitch a straight stitch across the bias binding. Take your scissors and trim the excess. So leave about five to seven millimeters seam allowance. Then you can just lay that flat open the seam and you can just press it with your fingers so it's nice and flat. Then you will be able to close that opening and finish stitching your bias binding which will look something like this when you finish it. The lazy way to join two pieces together would be to unfold your bias binding on both sides and then you can fold this short end towards the wrong side. So the wrong side of your bias binding are facing each other, just like that. Then you would place it on top of your fabric, like I have here, on top, and you could start stitching your binding to your panel. Go all around the panel, and when you come to the beginning, you would place the loose end on top, and you would overlap it by that folded edge. So if I folded it one centimeter, I would overlap it by one centimeter, and then you can just trim that excess. So in this instance, I can just trim that little tail off, and then you could just finish stitching that opening, then you can just make sure those two ends are nicely wrapped, just like that. And then you can just finish stitching your bias binding. So you would have a small opening between those two layers, but most of the time it, it, this is absolutely fine. You don't really have to worry about it. My favorite way of joining two ends together to sew a seam at an angle. This reduces the risk of having a lot of bulk in one place. So to start, you will mark your midpoint between the first and last stitch, the same way you've done previously. So I'm just going to eyeball it again. And next, instead of placing them right sides together straight like this, you need to place them at the 90 degrees angles. So keep one of your tails straight and then the other one, place it like this at the 90 degrees angle and match those notches that you just marked. So you see those two notches here? They are at the 90 degrees angle. So then when you have that, 
you can place that end on top. So matching those two notches, your pieces are at the 90 degrees angle. And then you can just pin that in place. The next step is to stitch a diagonal seam. So from those two notches that you marked previously, you're going to start at that corner and mark a diagonal line going to the opposite side. This is our stitching line. So now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch from that corner to this corner. Once you've got that stitched, you're going to take your scissors and again, you're going to trim the excess. So leave about five to seven millimeters. Cut those little triangles as well. Then place your bias binding flat. Open that seam. Finger press it. And then again, you can close that opening and finish stitching your bias binding. Okay, so what if you're uh, working with double fold bias binding? In this situation, what I like to do is to pin my bias binding around the entire panel, leaving long tails. And then you can do what you've done previously. So either stitch a straight stitch or a stitch at an angle. It, it works exactly the same way. So you would mark a midpoint between those two pieces. And then you need to unwrap the bias binding and matching those notches, you would place them right sides together. So I have my notch here and my, and my notch here. So I would place them right sides together, align that bias binding, and then you would stitch a straight stitch like this. Or if you prefer the 45 degrees seam, pin that at the 90 degrees, and then you would stitch that seam across. And then again, you would trim the excess, Cut away those little triangles at the end. And then again, you would have to open that seam allowance, press it with your fingers, and then you can just realign those folds that you have on your bias binding and insert the fabric inside, just like that. This way you would have the entire panel already clipped with those two ends joined together and then you can just stitch that entire seam in one go. The lazy way to do double fold bias binding would be to start stitching your binding, go around the entire panel. When you get to the beginning, you would have to overlap that loose end by maybe two centimeters. So if the beginning of my bias binding is here, I would eyeball it about two centimeters and can and can just trim the excess. Then you would need to unfold that loose end and then you can just fold maybe like a one centimeter fold. And then fold those two sides. And then you can just cover that raw short end with that folded edge here. Just like that, clip that in place and you can just carry on stitching. When I do the lazy option, I usually do it at the machine. So I don't typically clip my panel around. I would just st stitch it. And then when I get closer, I would stop. I would fold that end and finish that seam. Now you know how to join two ends of bias binding using different techniques. So go ahead and try it on a project. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends.